Okay, would you mind introducing yourself for the audience, please? Hi, uh, I'm Rob Major. Um, I'm a plein air painter. I live in Kent. I've uh, been painting since I was 13 as a hobby all my life. And uh, I retired from banking in 2012. So for the last um, 11 years, um, I've been 11, 12 years, I've been uh, painting um, three or four days a week, hopefully four or five days a week. Um, I'm pretty enthusiastic. I, I only paint outdoors. I never do work in the studio. And um, I enjoy doing, uh, um, putting my paintings on uh, Instagram because um, it keeps me focused and I enjoy meeting other, see, meeting other people and, and uh, finding out how, thing, how things work and gaining quite a good profile with other painters and, and the public at large. So uh, altogether, that's about me. Thank you. Yeah, great. Well, Rod, I've been an admirer of your work. I think I've heard come across your paintings during lockdown time. Mm -hmm. um, and I was always so impressed about the, the, the vibrancy, but also the deceptive simplicity of your technique, especially with your landscapes. I'm, I'm a big uh, fan of landscape painting. How long did it take you to develop your style, to, to get to a point where you were really confident with what you were doing? Well, I've always thought I've been confident, but probably <laughs> an answer to, to your question about when I started getting better. I think yeah. I started a lot of, when I retired in 2012, October 2012, um, I, I started doing a lot of um, eight by 10 paintings. Um, yeah. Lots of them, uh, two or three a day or four a day. And uh, they, I, I improved dramatically doing all of that lot. Um, some of them weren't very good, but I've got shed loads of, shed loads of small paintings. And I think I, um, I did that basically between 2013 and 2014, 2015 probably, over, 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 over those first three years. And then after that, I've, I've just started getting better, mainly through seeing other, other people's work on Instagram and being more right. motivated. Yes, yeah. So that being on Instagram has really sort of fed into your own motivation. Yeah, definitely. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Keep going. I feel I feel as if I'm if I'm not if I'm not showing people a painting, and I'm just not good. I like, but it's quite quite a useful discipline. Yes, yes, and I think that's interesting as well because some, sometimes, um, so so I teach painting as well, and sometimes my my students will get an Instagram account and they will go on there and they will scroll through and then come to the next class absolutely crestfallen because they've seen all of this amazing work on there and they think I could never get there. So it's this sort of two two edged thing in in a way that it can help be a pace car in a way for you to keep motivated and keep going. But sometimes some artists can also overly compare themselves to to others um i think you're probably probably right yeah. but then the, there's always uh it's like people who stop you in the street there's always people that, that aren't as good as you around yes um so you know no matter who, where you are there's always some stuff that's not not too good but with but, but this might encourage you but uh yeah it, I'm, if you're looking at 95 percent of really fabulous work and yours isn't anywhere near, then it might be a bit discouraging. But then we grow up looking at the French Impressionists and the Fauvists and all these uh, other yes. painters, and it doesn't put us off. We 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 want to keep going. We want to we want yes. to become like uh, like them. Yes, like yeah. Ever. So it's reframing it and being in, inspired by it. I think yeah, inspiration and uh, um, yeah, in, inspiration definitely. And, and influence, you can be influenced, yeah. inspired, and uh, that's probably a better form of teaching rather than someone telling you what to do. If you're Absolutely. seeing what you like and what inspires you, that's probably uh, quite a good thing. Absolutely. So, so Rod, on, on the uh, point of inspiration, you mentioned post-impressionists and phobists, and I see, I see it in your work, but who would you say out of the, the old masters were your uh, biggest the old influence. masters? Uh, well, I, I've or never, styles. I, I read, I've never really studied them too much. 
But yeah. uh, my, first, what, my first art book was Raphael, which I admired him a lot, mainly yeah. because it was dished up to me. I didn't choose him. It was just dished up to me. It was a, one yeah. of these books uh, that was given to me. And then, of course, we've always had uh, Turner and um, Constable, the East British ones, uh, Rubens. Um, I do like Rembrandt as well. And, of course, uh, Da Vinci. I, I, I spent hours pe doing, doing pencil copies of the Mona Lisa, uh, so all, all those big ones, but I never really uh, got emotionally attached to the old masters. No. I always thought that they were dull and, and formal and stiff, but I yes. loved the freshness and vibrancy of uh, of Monet and Sisley, Pissarro, the, the pressing, pressing pressness, and then the, the post ones, and then all all that followed, the Matisse yes. and, uh, and Picasso and people like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very much that sort of modern take and modern look on it and I think it's interesting with it as well with I'm a big fan of Constable's oil sketches yes. so forget the hay wayne anything like that it's those B&A oil sketches that yes. I'm, I'm very interested in and how they then you know many years later inspired Monet and Pissarro that, that they saw in them this kind of vibrancy and freshness which the Royal Academy would never have seen no. back in, in the time. Exactly. So, so in many ways, you're, you're sort of going on from that visual language and being inspired by the vibrancy of Impressionism and post-Impressionism. Frozen? No, you're still there, I think. I'm oh. here. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, that was, that was a... That was a sort of a, a question, in a way. Um, <laughs> Remind me what the question was. Then. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the question was, yeah. So the question was, do, do you see yourself very much in that that tradition of of uh, post impressionism and yes, yes, I do. Yes, definitely. Um, uh, the, the 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 post impressionists, notably Van Gogh. Um, yes, I do like uh, Sisley very much. Yeah. Um, and also, I moved on to as, as you get the more the older you get, the more you look, you start seeing more under the radar stuff. Now, I, I like the uh, 20th century British painters, um, right. like uh, Duncan Grant, um, yes. uh, Matthew Smith, even um, Sickert, Augustus John, those sorts of people. I love all those, mm. even Vanessa Bell, I like a lot. <laughs> yeah, Bloomsbury and stuff. Yeah, yeah beautiful. Yeah, I like all that lot. Um, uh, that's the British one. But then there's also the similar sort of schools in 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 France as well, which is mm -hmm. which, which we have to keep discovering because it's not just up to us on a plate. But this is the beauty of the internet. We can keep finding things that, that we never that we never knew, knew existed. So there's Absolutely. a limitless find now. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, do do you like any of the, the Russian impressionism? Yes, I do like the Russianists very much, but they don't have the profile. They weren't dished up to us. We've had to sort of find them much later yeah. on. But I do think that they they were very good. I like the the, the school of Saint Petersburg. Um, yes, I, I, I mean the names. I just can't reel them up. The names, <laughs> like <laughs> and, uh, um, and, and Monet. But uh, yeah, I do like them. And particularly the, 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 their art school training has been very good. Different from ours, ours went more into the creative uh, conceptual zone. Whereas the St Petersburg School kept teaching people how to paint and showing them traditional methods, uh, which, which included looseness but also formal work. Yes. And to this day, that they they seem to have great they seem to have great painters, you know, really good because of that. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. and that tradition is very much alive. Um, Simon and I were just talking off screen before about um, the amount of painters we've now interviewed here, the painters I know who haven't necessarily gone to art school here, and a lot of it is because of the conceptual leaning of art yeah. schools. Did, did you go to art school? Oh, no, I, I didn't. I, uh, I just did O-level art and then before, when I was about 14 and uh, then I did O-levels and I went to work in a bank. And, uh, and uh, But I've always had this as a hobby. I started, as I say, when I was 13. Um, but my, my main thing is that I had a book when I was 13 by, by Adrian Hill called, um, called oil, uh, The Beginner's Book of Oil Painting. I've got it. Yes, but also that's my original one, it's 1958. Was it, was wow. it, I was 10 then, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, so uh, I've still got that. And um, it, it, uh, 
Uh, I got started that, and the, the other book he has, uh, so I've got it, which I also had at an early age, probably when I was 14, 15, um, uh, and it's called Sketching Out of Doors uh, by author Bay. Uh -huh. So I, I got going, I put the bait planks on the back of my bicycle when I was 14 and 15, and I went and did some, I started playing air painting at that age, but with, with, with only the influence uh, of Adrian Hill. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and, and it's interesting, isn't it, how sort of one book like that can sort of inspire. Yeah. A trigger, a a life trigger isn't it? It's, uh, it's like priming something, and then, then once, once it, then it has its own, own life, but it, yes. it's a start, isn't it? Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I've actually got the, the first book you, you yeah. showed us. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So when you, with your career in, in banking, did you spend your weekends painting, your evenings? Yeah, well, painting? good question. Um, yeah. There was no golden rule, but I, I did, uh, generally speaking, weekends, yes. Um, and at the beginning, my, when my job wasn't at the high, too high press, I was able, able to do more. And also, I went to, I used to go on painting holidays on my own. I went to France uh, quite a few times, Provence, um, in the footsteps of um, some painters, a guy called uh, um, uh, Frederick Gore, who painted, went to Barnier in, in Provence. I, I followed in his footsteps. And also, another guy who I paint like very much a guy called William Warden is an RBA. He died about 1982. I, I knew him very well and he, he had a place in France. And uh, yes, I, 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 and I, I gained, gained a lot from going on a two or three week painting holiday and painting just outdoors in the lovely French countryside with olives and olive trees and purple shadows and orange fields and you know, distant hills. And it was absolutely wonderful. And I'm going to be hopefully going again soon, but I could never get enough of that of France. But fortunately, we're stuck here in Britain. <laughs> yeah, but and the light is is completely different. Yes, isn't it? it's a lot of ultraviolet uh, things. Yeah. And, you know, and in the, in the autumn, the, the length of the shadows and the richness of the of the light is lovely. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Fabulous, fabulous. Simon, do you, do you have any questions for that? Well, yes. Yeah, since your introduction, I was kind of um, curious about, I mean, I've started doing plein air painting this year and yeah. it's really because I work at home and I don't have a lot of space at home, so I don't get much painting done. I do a lot of drawing, but I just don't really have the space, you know, the elbow room really for painting. And I hate the idea of knocking over a glass of, you know, water or something on the computer. So yeah. going out painting offered a lot of freedom for me to, have the space to paint and to set up. I was wondering why it is that you didn't find it comfortable to paint in a studio as opposed to plein air. What was, what was that moment for you where you just became... I don't, I don't think it's a matter of being uncomfortable in the studio. It's uh, just that I like the fact that I, um, you have to paint quickly uh, uh, when you're outside because of the light. You, you really, two, or two and a half hours really, or three at the most. So you have to paint quickly, which lends itself to impressionism and spontaneity and freshness. Whereas when you're in the in the studio at home, you you're well. First of all, you're not unless you're doing a still life. You're not you're not painting from life. You're just painting from memory, which I don't really want to do. I'm not really that sort of a painter. If I was if I was just painting from memory, I'd probably come up with abstract work. But um, I, I do like representational work. Uh, so the studio also, in answer to your question, whenever I have done any studio work, I've, I've tended to gross pictures up, uh, a small small picture, I square it up and do a, a large one, uh, which, which works well. I get some quite good work, but it, it takes a lot of time. But also the, the, the end product is always a little bit stiff. And, you know, it's not my natural style of painting. Uh, I just rather paint fre freely. So it's nothing against the studio. I think uh, this guy here, um, Adrian Hill, he said, uh, I'm never happier when I'm uh, painting outside, apart from when I'm in my studio. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it, it's an interesting thing that outdoors or indoors, and your work has that immediacy to it that very much needs to be in the scene. So you have painted quite a few still lives, and yeah. I know during lockdown you did. 
Not notably during the lockdown, uh, <laughs> but and garden scenes. So yes, I do them because uh, sometimes I get if, if the weather's awful, you know, horrible, and, and and I'm all geared up for going out. Sometimes I will, but uh, getting the light. I don't really have a studio to be honest. I'm, I'm uh, in this room where I am now, which is a conservatory, which is it's a, sort of, I, where I do little things here. But uh, yeah, the, generally speaking, I, I I it doesn't. Once I get painting a still life, I'm inspired. I love it. I can do it. But I tend to paint paint a bit, a bit more carefully because there's no there's no time limit on them. Yes. That one that I paint posted uh, two days ago, uh, it, uh, a flower painting. That that was painted quickly because it had a shadow on it. And so, yeah. So I, I was happy with that one. That was outdoors. That was like a plain air painting, but it, it was yes. still alive. But still life, when, when you've got control lighting, you, you tend to get a, an exact painting and, and less impressionistic, Yes, uh, I think. But, um, so I, I just basically enjoy getting out, basically. Well, when you say that you have to paint quickly, I mean, I run out of steam after about two and a half hours when I've been out. After yeah. that, I really start to lose my momentum and I, I don't think I'm observing quite as keenly as I was. How long do you spend on it on a session out, outdoors well uh three hours at the most but so, sometimes if if, the, if it's a dull day i can i can go three or four hours but uh m mostly I, I mean that means that's if i'm doing a large one if i do a 20 by 20 by 16 which is probably the largest i do outside um it, i couldn't spend three and a half hours but i don't i don't think i should be spending more than that three and a half hours but uh, probably four is in answer to your question mm. but generally speaking two and a half to three hours for yeah. most of the sizes which i do up to, up to 16 by 12 and uh, uh, all below there and but 20 by 16 is a bit longer yeah mm. how is it you decide on your composition for your for your pieces do you well, I, I i i wander around to an area i like to sort of park the car somewhere where i know i'm going to be painting rather than try and see something as I'm driving around, because I think that you go for miles and you never see anything. But I stop, I stop, park the car and I wander around. And if it's a sunny day, you can see lots and lots and lots of, of, of scenes uh, that you can paint. And uh, uh, the answer to your question is, how do I decide which one, the composition? I think it, it's uh, the light at the time. So if there's a shadow across the field or, or there's some reflections that I like or some distant hills I like, or there's a bit of activity, like some people walking along the street. Uh, I don't think there's any golden rule, but uh, it's what I see and what I what takes my fancy. But there's no, I don't want anything to be too pretty. Yes. Um, I don't. I don't want to be a people pleaser necessarily. Although part of me is a people people pleaser. I do like to sort of um, be a bit more cutting, perhaps. So, but yeah. So uh, my wife sort of tells me sometimes that I, you know. Paint, I paint ordinary scenes. Why don't I paint something a bit more uh, iconic? And so I, uh, I painted St Paul's Cathedral, which was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's uh, yeah. Sometimes I can just. I don't. I don't think there's any golden rule, as I've already said. So, but, mm. so I just paint what I see, and, and I enjoy it. I have to enjoy it. I think I have to enjoy what I'm looking at, rather mm, yeah. than think, oh, I, I, that that will make a good painting. I have to enjoy it. Yeah, and yeah, absolutely. absolutely use you you know do you do that to kind of get what you know yes i do of, yes i do definitely yeah i do i yeah. sort of go like this you know like that yeah i, I want that now and, but i also do sight size as well so that like that does itself you know so mm. if, if i can do obviously angles i can just transfer them from what i'm looking at to my, to my canvas that here uh, and the length i sort of hold it by my, my fingers and i just say oh it's that long you know so it's it's not it's not technical it's just looking at lengths and angles and curves yeah. and, and um and then i don't i don't do a lot of, i spend a lot of time on the drawing and the initial drawing it's just the main blocking the drawing simple lines and all of the detailed drawing comes when i would paint mm, so I'm yes. painting it and hopefully uh, not working it too much but i do i do believe in working the paint i'm probably answering answering more than you've asked here no, no carry on please. i'm going to stick with it a moment because um when i Put, put paint down. I do. I the reason I do oils is, is I, I adjust it, not necessarily yes. straight away, but I put it down the best as I think the cut the tone is. And then when I put something next to it, I think, oh, that's not quite right because it, it's either too dark or too cool or warm, and I and I cool it down or darken it or whatever, and or even the one I just put down, I keep changing it so the two the two together are harmonious and they live together like they are in reality. 
Yes. Um, so uh, I think that's, you didn't ask me that question. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it's interesting with that and sort of going off uh, that when you're working, like you're saying, you're, you're constantly sort of adjusting elements exactly. of it. Yes. And do you tend to sort of say work holistically in that sense? So you can put a colour there, but it automatically adjusts something up here. So everything is related and you're always looking at a painting as a whole. Yes, definitely. Than... Yes, I, I think because I don't use a lot of colours, I don't, I don't use just two or three, I use a reasonable, but not many. Uh, yeah. so they tend to be, and I don't always clean my breasts properly, so the, yeah. there's a bit of every colour in everything, so it, it, it's naturally harmonious, the way that I paint. I put yellow ochre and a uh, cadmium orange in my blue skies, for instance, a little yeah. bit, because so, yeah. if you put blue down on its own, it's no good at all. No. It, needs, it needs to have atmosphere and, uh, and it has yeah. to stay the other colours. So I think, yeah, the harmonious thing, it, yes, I do, I do like that, but... Um, the way you're painting on the, the smaller the smaller panels that you do you you get that uh, you joined up harmonious uh, feel with that yes. feature rather much quicker on an eight by ten it's almost yes. given to you but when you you have to sort of uh, think a little bit more carefully about it when you're doing a, a sixteen by twelve or a twenty by sixteen or anything bigger of course absolutely uh, but the more you do the more you don't even think about it you know it just yeah. happens. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. like, it's like driving, you don't think I better put my foot on the clutch. I just uh, make, uh, uh, I, I, and I, I tend to mute some of the colours because the colours that come out of the tube come out of the tube. Um, uh, I remember there was a, an English painter called John Bratby. He used to put, put paint on the tube on the he's an RA. He used to put paint out of the tube, which is great. But I think he was probably uh, thinking he, he was a foe. But uh, I never obviously. You use paint for, straight from the tube. It's always muted or soft, oh, light, or dark. Yes. And I think the tone is is very important. Not just yes. the color, I think how light or dark it is. I mean, oh, absolutely. I t I totally agree there. Um, often what I do again with teaching is um, take do photo basic photocopies of you know say impressionist paintings. I think to show people. So, the most basic photocopy so they're quite raw and, and yeah. say look it's still absolutely perfect because it's just black and white but the tonal values yeah. in it work so so well Rod that's um talking about color great segue I've always been interested in your color palette and right. whenever you've posted bits of your Prashad box and I can try to spy exactly what color what uh, tube colors I see cadmium orange a lot. Yes, yes I, I do well I don't use a lot of it but uh, I use it a lot but I yeah. don't use much of it but it's only a tiny about tiny bit I never mix anything with a palette knife I just just, just dip tiny uh, brushing in and cadmium and cadmium orange when I'm doing a blue sky uh, or, or I drag it through a blue sky to sort of take mm -hmm. the blueness away. Uh, so what my colours are, I base my three main ones are uh, yellow ochre, uh, French ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson. Those are my right. three main colours. And then if I had to add two more, I use two whites, which is zinc white and titanium white. Mm -hmm. I use zinc white for lightening colours. Uh, right. And I use titanium because the colours don't become chalky and they, they retain more of the strength, colour strength. And I yeah. use titanium only for highlights and for really bright bits, which right. is why sometimes my paintings might look a bit dull when they're physically out there for that reason. But at least you can get the, the range of light. If you, you can't get light lights if you're using lots of light colours. If you fill yes. like colours with titanium, you're not going to have the, the hit. Uh, of using titanium for the highlights because you're already using it in the yeah. uh, I forgot what the question what the question was. Oh, the other palette, yes. Um, those are the main three three. So those three main colours: yellow ochre, French ultramarine, blizzard and crimson, two whites. But then the other ones that I have as um, cadmium yellow um, and uh, cadmium orange. You're quite yes. right. And then an earth colour, another earth colour is a uh, burnt sienna, which I'm, I have tendency to overuse which I have to be careful mm. because I don't like doing a brown painting but <laughs> yes yeah. the brown to sort of soften and mute and mute, mute a lot of things but yes. uh, I have to be careful not to use it too much <laughs> yeah 
I mean, it's such a useful colour, isn't it, burnt sienna, especially when mixed with ultramarine blue, because you get that yeah. absolutely gorgeous black colour. You, know, you can shift it a little bit brown or a little bit more. I, I, never, use, I never use black, uh, by the way. No. Well, no. most of the tell you, uh, art books tell you not to use it. Uh, mm. So you can get you can get the darkest colours with with that uh, Prussian uh, uh, ultramarine blue and uh, Elizabeth. Yeah. But then sometimes it, it's too purple, of course, because it is blue and blue and red, but maroon. Yeah. So you have to sort of make it the the sort of dark you want. So yeah. the, dark, uh, the shadows of a tree, I don't see it as dark green necessarily. I know we think it's probably dark green, but I put I put um, I put yellow into it then to sort of make it feel a little bit, bit more like a tree or yeah. uh, uh, whatever it is that, 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 that's in the shade, you know. But you, yes. the purple, yeah. purple colour on its own is, is never right. I always have to sort of mute it and adjust it, typically when it's on the board because it's too powerful. The first time you put it down, you take it down or it's not powerful enough if there's too much white in it. So yeah. I tend to keep adjusting them as I go along. And are you muting it with the, the yellow ochre? Like it, as uh, uh, yes, yes, I do. I, I mute. Uh, I, I mute a lot of stuff with a yellow if it needs it. Typically, yeah. if, if something's not, if something's too cool, for instance, uh, I will warm it up with a bit of drag some yellow ochre through through something that's on the board. Mm -hmm. um, re rarely, rarely mix the colours right on the on the uh, on the palette first time. Yes. Uh, but one of the things I'm well we're on the subject about uh, mixing colours uh, and painting is uh, on the on Instagram. A lot of people you see these videos of people painting and that they seem to be painting something and that's it. You know what I mean? I've just done that and, and that's it. I've painted it. I've put that out <laughs> and then I'm doing this with a big brush typically and holding it by their fist, which I don't do, by the way. Um, <laughs> it, and, or, or they're painting very, with a very small brush, but they, they seem to be painting it and that's it. And it mm. makes it just look so as if it's so easy. And it, it's I don't paint like that, basically. No. I never know. I feel my way. I feel my way continually, which is why I would never want to do any um, demonstrations, you know. Yeah, that's that's interesting, and it wouldn't I work. Think, yeah, <laughs> we, so with with your work as well, that it that it looks, and it's this deceptive thing of simplicity. So it looks like you're seeing. So one of your skies that you're just doing these lovely impressionist brush marks next to each other, but I know from painting myself that it's not just, <laughs> you're not just going in and doing these workshops. There's a lot of editing and reworking and balancing. But then when the final product is there, the people look at it and there's this air of simplicity. But I can see with you that you are working it out as you're going along. Like, like you're saying, you're, you're feeling your way around it. Yeah. So do you, so, Carry on. I was going to say you you say you don't do any demonstrations, and no. is is that because why? Because you, yeah, it's not I, a linear I, thing. I, I, I I'm not. Um, I, I I just it's a, a feeling feeling process. So I never know what, what's going to happen. I know what I want, but I don't know yeah. exactly how to get there. And I don't think I'm I'm equipped for showing people how to get there. But. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that a lot of people who watch, who watch me that wouldn't have, wouldn't have the patience to stand there for two hours, but they might. <laughs> Some people yeah. might. Yeah. Uh, what was I going to? I was going to say. No, oh, Karen. When I was out um, this year several times, I found it. I go with the intention of being methodical, and I think I'm going to box off the largest shapes, and then I'm going to get smaller and smaller brushes until I can, you know, satisfy the piece. But what in, you know unintentionally happens is it's it's kind of series of epiphanies and it can be a bit of a, an ordeal kind of getting through this messy muddy stage until I can kind of use the real contrast colors the darks and the lights to almost create a bit of an illusion with with form. I mean, is there any kind of any way where you think that's that's a kind of growing pain or is that something which you constantly struggle with where you think it's it's kind of pulling it together at the last moment with these strong contrasting colors or is it uh is that not so much a, a struggle that you you experience because I, I find that quite often yeah i think uh, as, as if you've been playing air painting for years it's probably a growing pain 
Mm. But uh, it is also something that you have to handle. You know, it's, it's not, not, not going to go away because when you're throwing different colours at something, you, you have a high, high chance of it turning muddy, turning mud, you know, dark, dark dulls, particularly when you're using lots of darks and purples and things. So you can easily go muddy. Uh, and, and if you're using brown as well, that's a candidate for not, not going down too well. So uh, this is why I don't think you need to be too uh, prescriptive when, when you're initial, uh, mixing your initial colours. Just do a bit, a bit to make, make sure it's work. And then once, you want, once you're happy with it, go for a bit more. But then, as you say, a bit later, when, when you put something next to it, then you might want to lighten it, darken it, warm it, cool it, or all sorts of things. Uh, but so I think um, also when it, when it does turn to muddy, or, or there is an area you don't like on the painting, that the, the, I think the, you could actually put thicker, thicker, thicker and thicker paint on, which sometimes works. Some people get away with it. But uh, it's also uh, uh, the best way is just to just, just scrape it off or rub it off that area and, and, and start again, and also clean your brush more carefully and then and start again. Um, uh, but uh, basically it's... Uh, it's not an ideal way to paint. Is is that sort of adjustment? You're better off if you, if you're in free free flow, really. But if there is a problem like that, and you do come across problems, sometimes you've drawn something wrong, and it needs to be changed, and you, you've got to take it out to re re-engineer it. But yeah, what you're talking about when when you first start, it's it's, it's almost certainly a growing pain. But, but the more you do it, um, the, the the better you'll be, and the easier it will be. So I do think doing the small ones, lots of small eight by tens. Mm. It's a great way to uh, uh, it's to get going, and you can do you can do several a day. You know, you can do you can do them in an hour and a half. Anybody can, as long as long as they're impressionistic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the more some... you paint, the 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 more you get used to it. And yeah. like Rob was saying, it, you know, a painting is a painting. You could spend a whole day doing a, a massive a massive twenty by twenty inch one, or you could do three or four smaller ones and you'll learn more from doing those three or four smaller ones than, than the big one. Exactly. I, 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 there's a guy called Andre Agassi, the tennis player. He said yeah. that the more I practice, the luckier I get. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> and also David Beckham's free kicks. He didn't get to be good at those free kicks just because he was good. He 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 did a lot of practice. Yeah. 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 It's I mean it's even things like when I go out to try and find something to paint I found that I should have maybe done a bit of a, a recce or a reconnaissance earlier on because I'll spend half of the day carrying an easel and a canvas and a bag full of paints and all types of things and traipsing up a mountain until I find I'm, I'm far too tired to do anything really <laughs> decent. I'll try yeah, and pull yeah. something together and you know get stuck in a field and not be able to find a way out and things like that so there's been all sorts of calamities when I try to go out plan air painting just to find something which is because i'm in north wales so it's kind of there's lots of countryside around mm -hmm. to try and capitalize on but unless i'm familiar with the site i'll just find myself stuck and think i, I have to do something because i'm out here to do yeah. next. i think uh, i think the answer to that one is uh paint 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 the first thing you think you like rather than go around for looking for anything better Particularly for sun shining, it's going to be it's going to be okay for sun shining, and it, and it might be ordinary because some of the best paintings are of ordinary things. You yes. don't have a spectacular view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can I share one of my favourite paintings of yours? And I don't know if you remember it. And Simon will eventually put it on the screen when it's together. Yes. <laughs> but it but it is. I'm just bringing it up. So it is from 29th of April, 2021. And it is cloudy day, Farthing Common. Do you remember this, Rob? So, uh, Rob, so, I don't know if you can see it on the screen here. Yes. Oh, no, I see. Yes, it's a, a skyscape. Yes, I, yes, I, yeah, I see that. Yeah, I love yes. that. I love that. And it's got that little bit of smoke rising in the distance. Yes, the smoke there was a bit of a gift. Yes. <laughs> it was yeah, it's one of my favourite paintings by him. And it, because it is... I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful scene, but it's a cloudy day. You know, there's not a lot of drama going on. But this is where the painter creates that drama and that atmosphere. And I think it's, it's almost a perfect painting, and I've always gone back and admired it. Fantastic. And I think, 
Yeah. Yeah. Can, can, can you remember that day painting it? Pardon? Can you remember that day yeah, when you I painted it? I definitely remember. And uh, the, those clouds were, were, were dished up to me on a plate. I mean, I couldn't resist them. This is because normally it's a, a predominant land up there, not, not off the sky, but I deliberately looked right up, up, got the clouds in, and just the horizon. So it was predominantly a clouding painter. And one of the things I do remember was getting the aerial perspective of the clouds. Lots of people played the, cl the same clouds. So, as though they're um, like all at the same level coming to, mm -hmm. but this, the, the, these clouds go away, and therefore yes. the, the, the clouds in the distance aren't as dark and powerful. So they, mm -hmm. they get um, they get weaker as they go into the distance. The clouds, yes. and of course, the land always does the same. Yes, but I remember making the, those clouds uh, concentrating on the. Obviously, the sky gets lighter and warmer at the bottom as well, but. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it, not just the bottom of the sky, it's actually the distance, you know, rather than mm. just the bottom of the sky. Mm. Uh, I remember that, yeah. Yeah, and uh, like you say, that little bit of smoke coming up there, like a yeah, little gift. It was a gift. Just, it just, just perfect, because you've got, you know, what's in quite a horizontal yeah. landscape and sky. Yeah. You've, then you, you've just got this little vertical bit of smoke. Coming I, I didn't make that up, that was just gifted to me. I, thought, I, I, I put seagulls in when I see them. You know, yes. sometimes there might be a little one a long way and sometimes they might be quite close or whatever. But so I, yeah. I, I do only, only put things in as I see, but then, then I don't need to worry about them. But if you make something up and put it, it might not fit in. Yes. Well, that was there and I thought, well, I can see exactly how, 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 how light or dark that smoke is, where it is and how much it mm -hmm. is and whether it's warm or cool, it's warm or cool. But uh, yeah, it was, it was a gift. <laughs> Do you ever yeah. take anything else? Do you ever paint, you know, go to a scene and think, I like it all, but I don't want the post box there or something like that and remove anything. Do you ever do any editing? Uh, sometimes. I, I, I tend not to like uh, painting window boxes mm. and hanging baskets. So, so this is the trouble if you're painting in a pretty village in the Cotswolds. Yeah. People, you know, you, you, I wouldn't really, I would try to avoid painting them, but I painted a scene in Hive a few weeks ago, earlier this month, and I, I just I just sort of daubed that. I just gestured some, some, I didn't put flowers in them, I just made them, because they had, they had shadows. Mm. Underneath, underneath, underneath the, hang, the, the window box, there was a shadow, so I put the shadow in, just because, because I didn't want to do that bare, but I didn't, I didn't put all the flowers in, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that can be really nice though I do think that when you have things removed and just suggested with shadow it can well, also uh, there's, there's a thing called local colour um, you know I think you, you, you've got the local colour is always not the colour that, 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 you, that you think it is so London brass for instance could be very very dark if it's, if it's silhouetted against a, a sunset or if the sun's on it it could be very very bright and mm. a lot of, most of the time it's in shadow so you, you've got to sort of mute and, and alter the the local colour. Very few. Well, I don't like painting a local colour when on the Dell Day because it's just it's just what it is, and it detracts from painting. So, I, I tend not to like doing local colour um, too, too much. Mm. Mm. Colour is in the natural things. I think. It was yes. recently we had a big downpouring here, and it's been such nice weather. And I yeah. got caught in it because I was walking to the garage to pick up my car from being MOT'd, and. Yeah. Um, and when I was walking to pick it up and getting absolutely soaked, I noticed something that was so obvious, but I'd never really considered it. And I thought I'd consciously thought I'm going to look at the ground to see what's happening tonally, because obviously it's all going to be shiny in certain areas because of the puddles forming. And I always thought that the puddles would be light, but I've realized that puddles are like mirrors for whatever's casting exactly. upon them. And that was something which I think when you can see in paint, it's it's such a gift to be able to walk around and, and observe is. the world. Is there things like that where you you walk around and you just have these? Yes, yeah, I think puddles are great because because they're they're very shallow. They don't have they don't, they don't get dis they're very low down. Mm. They, don't, they don't get disturbed by the wind sometimes. Very often, mm. unlike normal water on a river or canal or certainly the sea. But they, they, these are flat, so they tend to be a mirror image. And yeah. if if they're underneath a, a, a shady tree. Uh, th then they're really dark and yeah. sometimes mm. nearly as dark as the shadow of the tree, the mm. dark, the dark. So, and the lights, obviously, the light of the sky uh, is, is really light. Mm. But one thing that um, 
I always say about, well, it's, it's a, uh, Ken Howard says about painting uh, reflections in anything, water, any water, is the darks uh, are always lighter and the yeah. light are always darker. <laughs> yeah. yes. so general rule, that is the case, but I, I have seen some of these puddle shadows. The darks in the puddle shadow are sometimes as dark as the actual top bit. I don't know why, yeah. but they are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's it's fascinating, isn't it? Because I've I've always followed that rule, and then I'll look at something, and it's completely the opposite. Yeah. Um, and a lot of that's to do, obviously, with like you're saying, the, the surface, what's happening, whether there's wind on the surface, or stay with the puddle. If if the pavement beneath it is dark, you'll get in that darkness. It's so one, one final thing to say on these on what I just said about rules and things. Uh, mm. Samuel Johnson said the golden rule is that there's no golden rule. And yeah. I thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But Absolutely. That's why I don't believe in te necessarily in teaching. Um, I, no. I think inspiration and, and uh, influence is um, are very effective. It has been for me. Yeah. Uh, I, I've taken it from the people who I liked, who I admired a lot. Yes. Was that someone who could teach art? <laughs> yes, yeah. It's interesting that, isn't it? That, but we do, and we sort of pick and choose. So we take bits that that work for us. Yeah. And when I I teach painting, so I teach painting online and in person. I never do it in a, a prescriptive way. Yeah. So it's always because I want everybody else's style to come through. Exactly. You don't want everybody to paint like you because there's certain things that you do, like you were describing earlier, that you're, you're feeling your way around it. And I often find that, you know, I don't know what I'm doing half the time. So I tend yeah. to focus more on colour mixing yeah. and simplifying and simplifying the scene and the forms rather than actually doing a prescriptive thing is like this is how you do this brush stroke yeah. or, or this but um I went to art college but it was all conceptual art so I didn't learn anything about painting and I find that my favorite painters are usually self-taught painters who've borrowed visually from people who inspired them um and I I just love that, that individual, and that's why I like your work so much. I can yeah. see it. it. It's you know you you've you've fought hard for it in a way just through that that uh, that practice and that work ethic, and and the the fruit of that is showing now. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you very much. <laughs> that's all right. So, um, well, question. Um, you you often go out and paint with people um you know you have little plein air outings with friends yeah. it, how important is that to you that camaraderie i i think i do enjoy the that but i, I don't need to do it all the time um, yeah. some people only like to only go out painting with other people i i like to go out on my, my own most of the time but i have got some local friends um, the, the sort of a, through me got into into play playing there we go every three weeks but the, it is important to, not just for the painting but the camaraderie as you say and we always go to the pub for lunch and it's every three weeks and we chose every three weeks because once a month isn't enough <laughs> yeah. That's about it I also enjoy going to uh, into London I've, I've just recently started painting with the London plain air group which yes. I was well, too sure lots of people I know uh, in there yeah really nice yeah it's lovely Mm -hmm. so that's, and also painting in London is pretty good. It's a, you, yeah. you sort of like some iconic subjects. And there's a lot that you, again, we go to the pub afterwards and I think that's yeah. So I like it. Yeah. So mi mixing, mixing the social, but predominantly on my own. But I, 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 I do enjoy painting with others, yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, we interviewed uh, Tushar, um, uh, uh, what was it, a couple of, last time or a couple of times ago, but yeah. he's... Yeah, t uh, Tisha Sabat. Sabat yeah, yeah. And so he set up the London Plan Air, but, and he's got such a great energy for yeah. that, that kind of gathering and, yeah. and, and, and painting together. Um, so, Rod, do you, do you have um, a favourite place to go to paint, or do you have many? Um, many, many, but I think uh, in answer to your question, favourite places, um, mm -hmm. I enjoy. Uh, uh, 
I, I enjoy the, the harbours, uh, Whitstable yeah. Harbour, Boats and Harbour, Dover Harbour, uh, Ramsgate Harbour, and uh, boats in London at uh, mm. at, um, uh, at uh, St Catherine's Dock, uh, the Thames, those sorts of boat reflections. And then also I enjoy the the the, the high up landscape, so that that farther in common one you mentioned, yes. uh, north of the North Downs near Wye, uh, looking across the the landscape and going further into the distance, you know, you know, fifty miles distant view and going to into the distance. I love all that. And, and then bringing the, the foreground nearby, including blades of grass, and it goes into this distant field. Yeah. And of course, also for the sky, as I mentioned as well, not just the, the land, but the sky as well, going into the distance. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you've got that sense of sense of space and depth. I'm in Norfolk, so yeah. it's massive, massive skies here. Yes. So. Uh, is it, have you ever painted out this way? Seagull, um, Seagull painting. Yes, I, I went into the paint out Norfolk in 2015, I think, or 2014. Yeah. James Coleman, and um, it hasn't been since because it, it was just in Norwich in those days. Yes. It's, it's a nice place. It is lovely. Yes, and it is very, very Seagull esque. Um, oh, Seagull, yes, yes. It's, it's, it's very lovely, it's a big sky. I, I will go back again. Um, I'll probably go back to the paint out Norfolk next year, but I can't do it. Yeah. Yeah, good. And yeah. where else do you go? In it? I've seen you you painted up in Scotland as well. Uh, Scotland, oh yes, oh, very early on. Yes, I, I, yes. I big, big, big uh, fan. Of, I'm, I'm surprised I didn't tell you before now. Uh, big, big <laughs> fan of a guy called Cadell, a Scottish colourist. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. And also Peplo, of course. But Cadell, yeah. I love his paintings of Iona. And uh, when I was um, in the quite a high pressure job in, towards the end of my career. I found a week to go to Iona and followed in Cadell's footsteps. And I, they weren't wonderful paintings, they're only as late by tense. They're not wonderful at all, but I thought they were good at the time because I've come on a lot since. And I'd love to go back again and, uh, and have another bash at those, those sorts of scenes. Mm. scenes. Uh, mm. uh, I should be able to do a lot better job. <laughs> but yeah, I do mm. like Cadell and Peplo, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I see there was one in particular where the the, the blue of the sea is yes. absolutely it's incredible. Nice, isn't it? Yes, mm. it's, it's, the, the shells at the bottom they all get crushed up, and the shells yeah. not any light, even not the sun. The light sort of the, the, the light from these shells comes up, and there's clear water, and it becomes yeah. turquoise. And against this white sand, in which in turn is crushed up shells as well. You know, it's it's wonderful. I did a I did a postcard, copied a postcard, first time ever. Um, about a year ago, uh, of the ferry going over to Iona, which I bought that that uh, I bought that uh, postcard then, and I, I've ah. used it ever since. So, and I did this postcard. Use I had to use, use a more powerful blue. I used phalo blue. Yes, very strong. Which is terribly strong, but uh, and that's the only painting I've ever used it on. Sometimes mm. I use it when if, if I want to do a man-made green, you know, um, yes. or something like that. But uh, yeah. normally I don't, it's too powerful for me normally. Yes, me too. Do you, do you ever work, um, I mean, you said you work from a photographic reference there. Uh, On that occasion I did, yeah. Yeah, Never how do you find it? I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's totally different, isn't it, to, to paint in plein air? I have, to, I have to, I did a, a one on the, in, in the in the lockdown, I, I did a, a copy of painting, um, that was dished up to me, a painting in St. Ives, I think, uh, which I was quite pleased with. I, I was surprised how, how, how it worked, worked out. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, I, I think you, you, there's not enough information in a photograph for the sort yes. of stuff I like looking at. In the, yes. the shadow on, on a photograph is, is just one thing. Was when, you, when you're there, it's got all sorts of nuances on it, including mm. the, the warmth and the cool, th cool and the mm. colours in the depth. Yeah, and it's a, that sense of space and depth as well. The photograph it always flattens it, yeah. so you've got this sort of flattened view in, in that sense. Yeah, um, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, Do you yeah. have any anything which is um, developed over time? As far as it's a bit of a technical question, there may not be an answer for it. I'm not sure. You may just say no, but there are certain things like um, I've heard when people say if you go to a complicated scene to paint or to draw try and find the longest line you can start off with for composition so that at least you have this longest line and then you can build from that 
the angles and the complications. Is there any way that you know of to kind of make uh, painting a scene more efficient? Um, I think that that's uh, something that I would probably do. Uh, if there's a big, uh, if it's a horizon, you want to work out uh, where the horizon is going to be, like I did for that, that little cloudy one you just saw, mm. cloud one from Farthing Common. Um, in which case, work out where, the, where it's going to be. And it, it is a, a horizontal line going across the whole painting. Where is it going to be? It's towards the top, because it, there's not much of a sky, it's a bit boring, or, or it's even blue sky and no, no cloud, or at the bottom where you've got all these clouds coming there. Um, and a horizontal line there. And, and I, I think that otherwise, I don't necessarily think you need to, um, to worry too much about that, that particular thing. I think just to, just work out where, where you want the painting to go to, like the top of that, 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 that roof there and the top of that one there. Then you start off at that roof there and uh, try and make sure that where you finish. Or also the one, if you make sure the ones in the middle, what you, if you're doing sight size, it, it should work out as long as you, you something over there, put it down there, something over there, put it down there. Uh, yeah, and this is why eight by tens are a little bit easier because they're, they're narrower, so you're not, you're not doing such wide vistas. Yes, yeah. and and your brush marks as well on on an eight by ten. I mean, if you're working on a big one, two in one brush, you even need a very big brush. Or yeah, quick, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yeah. So uh, that eight uh, by ten, uh, you've got much space. Yes, we're talking over each other. Uh, but yeah, I think <laughs> I tend to lend themselves to, to seeing the brushwork. Um, yeah. How my, I, I, I got on by people saw my, saw my brushwork. And, um, and I thought, well, I'll keep the same brushwork, but just do bigger pictures. Yes. When you, do, when you do the bigger pictures and you put them on Instagram, you can't see the brushwork as much. Not unless no. you zoom in. Yes. Do you use bigger brushes then? Yeah, I do for the bigger paintings. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't got any brushes to show you, but yeah, those big ones about that. And and what brushes do you tend to use? Flats, rounds, filberts? Oh, flat ones, flatty, flat, yeah. flat, long, long flat ones. I, I, yeah. I don't know the name of them. Long flat ones, about that long and that thick. But also, I yeah. use the, the ordinary little round, soft sable type of brushes you know, for, for painting uh, for for acrylics, really. But I, I just use them for the, I use them for the, the, the fine, the more input, the finer bits. Yes, Sometimes masts and ropes. I tend to keep using it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Ever use a palette knife? No, never use a palette knife, no. I don't even scrape my palette off with a palette knife. Huh? <laughs> 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 <Take that. laughs> you have a preferred time of day to paint? Is there any, you know, do you, are you a morning painter or is it the whole day is available to you? Uh, well, I, you know, when I'm on holiday, I, I, uh, in, in, on a painting holiday, I'm obviously all day. I'd, I'd have to get up early, seven o'clock, get the morning light. But you can't paint all day, actually, necessarily. You do need breaks. You need to sit under an umbrella, have a glass of wine or something. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I think uh, in my normal life here, in, in a normal the normal time in, in England, um, I tend to go out. I, I don't go out before about 9 o'clock, 8.30, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock at the latest. Hmm. And then um, I tend to finish about 5 or 6. But then again, in the winter, you, you're getting sunrises. Yeah. Uh, uh, and you're getting, you're getting sunsets. Yeah. So, you know, which is great in the winter. Both of those two are in the winter are great. Mm. Yes. So, yeah. Not really, not you have, paint any type of time of day, really. But Do, do you have a favourite time of year, then, to paint? Oh, yes, I do like uh, the autumn very much. Yeah. The longer shadows, the warmer, ultraviolet light. Um, mm, absolutely. Yeah, I do love all yeah. that in the autumn. Yeah. That's, that's why I want to go to Provence again in the autumn. Yes. Yeah, and like so, I like autumn, winter time the best because sunrise and and sunset you can see both in in the day and still be sort of functional within it, yeah. you know. But there's just something something about the lights, um, autumn and winter time, it, it's very very special. And um, yeah, the problem is it's very cold to paint outside. It does get cold, yeah, definitely. I have to keep going back to the car to warm my hands up, keep my <laughs> breathing. Yes. I don't, I don't wear gloves either, so uh, it, it's not very good when it's really cold. But I, every half hour, I go and warm my hands up somewhere or other, because otherwise it would be awful. <laughs> <laughs> and do, do you take uh, do you take a flask and pack lunch? And, and stuff like that? No, I, I think um, I'm a bit like Van Gogh, and when you're painting, I don't think about anything else. I don't think about food. 
yeah. Uh, once when when you get on a, on a train and and you've got some some sandwiches with you, all you can think about is eating them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think about them at all. I don't think about eating. Um, if I finish a picture at three thirty or four o'clock, I've not had lunch. I, I don't know about it. I, I, it just happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're in the zone. You just yeah, yeah, yeah. focus on what you're doing. Yeah. That's really interesting. Um, Rob, can I ask as well about um, it, you know, galleries? Do you, do you show it showing galleries? No, I don't. I know you sell it. online. I, I make mainly online. I, I sell a, f a few online. I don't make a living out of it, but I, I sell I sell all I need, all I like to do on a, on it yeah. through Instagram, not directly, but indirectly. Yes. Uh, plus, I do have a gallery of sorts in. Uh, East Sussex called uh, called Greenfinch. It's in Ticehurst, yes. and she's yes. about eight or nine of my pictures, and she she sells quite a few of my pictures for quite good money. Really. Good. And you've yeah. recently had a show there. Yes, I have. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, well, it's only a couple. It's only, only only over a weekend, but yeah, that was quite good. Didn't yes, sell, yeah. I didn't expect to, but uh, I just said I entered into the spirit of it and I did some paintings at, at the said venue as well in advance. Mm. So I enjoyed it. Yeah. And it's, I mean, the art market's quite difficult at the moment across yeah. the board. Um, you know, I've, I've got friends who've, who've went down the traditional gallery route and represented you know, all, all over the place, London, Cornwall. Um, and it's difficult at the moment with, with galleries even selling work. And the, I mean, I mainly sell my work on, online and it mainly goes to the states um and it's one of the great things about instagram that you know yes, you have that. All over the world yeah yeah it, it's so uh, do you it's an interesting question i'm sometimes surprised which works of mine sell <laughs> you know, so i'll often put one there and think oh this is you know i love it and you know doesn't but then one that i'm not that fussed about people seem to like and buy do you do you ever have that where you're you're sort of um you have favorite works that you put up and this is like you know you can imagine someone just snapping it up but then they go for something that's uh, a little bit yeah, different you definitely find that i had a, a a lady came from uh all the way from australia not just to see me but she, she came from mm. australia to see her sister but anyway she, was, she wanted to meet me and she came to see me and I, I went, when I was doing a lot of eight by tens, this is about 2015, and she went through all these, uh, 2016 probably, she went through all of my, my paintings and, and, uh, and uh, she chose six paintings to have, which was great. Uh, but uh, also, she kept, what, what about these over there? I said, well, they're just, no. oh, I'm going to have a look at all those. And she went through all the stuff that I wasn't going to be showing her because it was just all around. Yeah. And she chose, pictures that I didn't think were all that fantastic but she <laughs> so exactly as you say uh, they it's people see things that you, that you think yourself aren't this is why uh, it doesn't hurt to sort of show people plenty but you, you can't show too much. you can't show too much but uh, I didn't mean this girl anyway she, she she bought six and five or six four or five of them I, I wouldn't I wouldn't I was surprised <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I think it goes to show that art in that sense of paintings, you know, we as the artists, as the creators, don't really see them objectively because we, we're part of the process. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, well, we, we always think that the painting you've just done is, is really quite good. And then yeah. like, a month later we think, it, well, it's not bad. And then <laughs> a year later we think it's rubbish. <laughs> yes. and then, and then two years later come around, someone comes around and says, we really like that. <laughs> and, and I think that is part of the, for me it's always the next painting you know the next yeah. painting the one yeah, that's going to yeah the hit yeah. yeah the hit and you know where I sort of solve all of the problems and that's what drives you on you know I mean it's that yeah. thing if we were if we were completely content with every every painting and um, you know, there, there wouldn't be that drive to, to okay. get up and go out and, yeah. uh, and do it again. And um, also, we're not, to, I mentioned the word people please it earlier. You know, we're, I'm, I'm, I'm not painted to, to sell or I'm not painted yeah. to please, which, which I think is quite good for it in terms of art. Um, it helps me because I'm not, to, not I, I sometimes do paint to please people if I have a commission, but 
generous. You know, I just paint for me, and I'm I'm not painting it to sell, so I can paint what yeah. I want, how I want, and also when I want, which is great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Do you do strange. many commissions? Sorry, oh, Sam. Sorry. Yeah. I was just going to no. say, I always find it strange when people say. I don't care what people think, because I do. I care what people think. Not necessarily just about arts, but just generally. I think it's a good, you know, barometer for how we're behaving in the world. It's just, you know, as other people will tell us and, and reflect back to us how how we are presenting ourselves sometimes. So I don't necessarily disregard people's opinions. I think they're quite valuable. I was going to ask you though about because we're talking about Instagram. And I'm always curious how artists manage this square format. And I've seen that you've capitalised on certain things with your St. Margaret's Bay, Kent, crops from four paintings. And you have these vertical strips of four paintings. It's oh, yeah. a beautiful way of yeah, capitalising yeah. on such a limited, you know. Uh, I topic. think, um, well, I use the thing called, um, uh, it's an app I have on my phone. Yeah. For, for, for that, uh, it's called. Um, yeah, please. What is it? Called? Um, it's called. Um, I can't. I can't see it at the moment. I'll have to let you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll insert the name afterwards because that's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's something which I think is quite cre a creative way of managing uh, a website, which does kind of you know restrict how how much how well you can present your work sometimes, and it's all little tiles. That people are just scrolling past and not necessarily yes. viewing the best. I, I think originally when it first started Instagram, uh, there, it was all it was just squares. Now you can actually do a rectangle one. You just select re rectangular one, but you don't get as much painting if it's a horizontal. If it's a, a, a landscape, you don't get much painting on the phone. Mm, yes. If you do a, a portrait one, you, you can actually get a lot more painting. We've got, we've got painted over the the whole of the foot, a mobile phone. Yeah, so get yes. on that. So uh, a bit of everything, but the, the mobile phone, the the uh, the, um, the reels are best stuff done in, in portrait. For that reason, you get it more on the on the phone. Yeah. So yes. uh, I, think I don't often do 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 uh, just just square formats. You can you can put the you can put anything you want, or you can just squeeze it. Yeah, yeah. And it is interesting, sort of navigating that digital space because I tend to, and I don't know whether it is Instagram inspiring, but I paint square, a lot of squares. Yeah. And, um, just because I've, I've, maybe my eyes have just become adjusted to, to, to working in, in squares. But I think as well, and what I like about your Instagram feed is where you're doing a carousel. So you've got the finished painting there and then you're showing those stages. Oh, yeah. Of, way you're set up and they they seem to be you, you get some great comments on there as well that people are, are sort of fascinated by seeing that that process yeah i i um i i like to see the, the those um stage payments myself which is why i put them on because i enjoy them because because they're they're, they're history you know they're, they're frozen mm. in time um they're part of what what the, the the end product is the painting the end product is always going to be there the painting mm -hmm. those, those stage payments are never going to be seen again but it, it can be seen again because uh you take the photograph and I've, if i share them then other people can share them i'm not trying to educate people or anything i'm just showing no. what what happened what how it, how it developed yes uh, yeah i want to show people how easy it was you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. and it gives it's that uh, and I guess for you know for your memory as well that it's there and sort of you can yeah. go back and especially I, I, if you painted the thing it, yeah. before it remembers yeah yeah I, I do do like it and, then, and and it shows me what time of day it was so if I want to go back again I can see what the sun was the shadows were here at half past eleven in the morning because they're, they're yes. time those photographs yes so you know exactly what time of day you finished and when you started. Yes. There is it built in. It's not a, it's not like a hindrance to, to document the work, because for some artists, it's difficult to manage the filming and photographic side yeah. of the work as well as the production of it. Is that just built into the process? I have my phone, my phone in my pocket. Yeah. And I just, um, well, 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 I'm happy with that stage now. I just get my phone out and I, I do I, I do two pictures, I do a horizontal one, um, a, a landscape one, if I'm, mm. if I'm doing the, just an ordinary post. And if I'm doing a reel, I do a, uh, I, if I want to do a reel, I'll do a vertical one as well. Yeah. 
uh, so of, any, of each stage, but only about uh, three or four <coughs> stages, four stages, five stages at the most. Mm. Uh, sometimes I do forget to do the stages. <laughs> well, no, you've adapted <laughs> to this. I enjoy, I enjoy them because I like to see them myself because they're yeah. never to return. Well, do you yeah. ever use it as a way to step back from the painting as well? Because I've heard that people can use that to see things which you can't see with your eye in person. If you take a photograph, it will really, you know, really show the composition, really crush down into a smaller, you know, size. Yes. Well, when you finish the happen. painting, yes, when you finish the painting, you see it in a different light. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can be yes. very useful. Yeah. 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 Not so <laughs> long, but uh, uh, if you stand back from a painting, it, it does help a lot. And also, yeah. if you break, if you go away for a few few minutes, yeah. you talk, talking to someone, and then you yeah. come back, you can't remember where you were. That's the problem. Yeah. But uh, at least you can see. Uh, yes. I can't remember what you were doing exactly, but you can see uh, what what might be needed. Yeah. You sit with fresh eyes in the way. Yes. Yeah. If you're too close to some something, yeah. it, it kind of unknots itself. But yeah. you go away and you come back in, you know, yeah. even if it's just for a few seconds, you yeah, see yeah. it quickly. And, exactly, yeah. And what yeah. Helped, yeah. Mm. Um, quick question, rather, about painting the, the, the same scene in different light. Um, I love Monet's hay bales. And, yeah. um, where he's, he's sort of capturing it at those different yeah. times of day. Have you ever been wanted to do that? Just go back to that same position or that same scene and, and do I it do through. go back to the same scene, yes, definitely. Sometimes mm. I do, yeah, definitely at different times of day uh, and I wait for next year as well, definitely. Mm. And hopefully do something a bit better. Yeah. I did some late harv harvested fields when after the harvest had been taken last year mm. um, and uh, we were quite successful on Instagram. And uh, I'll probably go back again this year and do something. Yeah. And do you feel that connection to um, to landscape, to to place? I mean, this is very important for me as as an artist. And you know, the, the, the more so, I moved to Norfolk from London about it's about two years ago now. I've lived all over the place, Cornwall, grew up in in Lincolnshire. But leaving the city and, and coming here, and I live, my studio is right next to the, the Grey Twos, it's a tidal river. And since I've been here, I, I kind of know what time the tides are, yeah. you know, I know what time the sun's going to set, you know, if the clouds are over here, you know, if it's yeah. going to rain later. Is this, you know, as an artist being in tune with the landscape and, and nature, it's, it, it's becoming so important to me. Do you feel that as well when, when you're do, When I'm there, yes, I do. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm totally attuned to it when I'm actually there. Uh, yeah. and I can remember it when I left. But normally speaking, I'm not. I, I just have to look at my phone to see what the weather is, to, yeah. to see what the tide is at any place. Yeah. Um, but uh, but I, I don't know too much about... Uh, a sense of place, but yeah, when you're there, essential is wonderful. And, and this is why I, when I compare it to the tourists who, who go to a place uh, with their cameras, uh, any, any tourists, and they, they, they're there for five minutes, ten minutes, taking pictures, and then they go. Yes. Yeah. Half, two and a half, three hours, and you're seeing so much more. You're seeing the shadows yeah. moving around, you're seeing the light casting different sorts of parts of boats, different trees, different parts of windows on houses. And you can pick and choose what you want. As long as you're painting what you saw at that time, over yeah. the course of a couple of hours, it, it should, might fit. Uh, obviously, okay. all the colors need to be the same sort of angle, that sort of thing. But uh, yes, you, it's, it's, it's wonderful what you see by being in tune with the, uh, with the environment. And you, you, mm -hmm. you are very much more than any other outlook, probably, that, than there is. Yeah. Mm. And you sort of build that relationship with it in a way, and yeah. especially because you're mainly painting around your your local yeah. area. And yeah, yeah. You think of Edward Sego and, and people like that, but yeah. you know, it, after a while, it's the, those colours, that vernacular that, that is really coming into the work that you know. I mean, Sego has these, these kind of yellowish skies every now and there. And, yeah. Now living in Norfolk, I know exactly what those skies are, and it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's a beautiful thing to to be in tune like that. Yeah. Just just one other thing on the subject of the environment and being in tune is that winds. We have a lot of north northeasterly winds just recently, and I, I and when we have a southwesterly wind, I know all the places I can paint 
where there's not much wind, basically mm-hmm. on the lee side of those hills or so. And and one is northern, I know other places like that I can paint. So that's quite useful. But because you've been been out so many times, you know, yes. we want to go back to the same spot. But yeah. uh, if, it is, if it is really windy, I know what, you need shelter and you need to find it. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> because your paintings are flying across the landscape. Yeah, having your back to the wind is, is, is better than having faith. Is, is better than having it facing you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, so did you say you you uh, had to finish at twelve o'clock? Is that what you yes, said? Yes, I will have to yeah. as well. You will. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. 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 At this point, then I'll just thank you very much for your generosity and your time being on. It's so such a treat to talk to you. It's been so nice to have you tell us and share with us your experiences and thoughts on these uh, different questions and things. So really appreciate it. Is there anywhere that you'd like the viewers to go and see your work? Do you have a website as well as Instagram? I mean, is there anything that you'd like to promote? Yeah, so I've got a website, uh, robmajorart.co.uk. There's a link in my on my bio, but uh, on my homepage of Instagram. But uh, Instagram is probably better because the, the images uh, are much better and there's more stuff on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> links will be in the description is there anything else is there any uh, events or uh, exhibitions no, I've, I've got nothing coming up no, no I'll, I'll be just out painting as usual <laughs> just love it. Oh, um, again, so thank you very much indeed for asking me to do this um, uh, I, I don't know what's going to come of it but it's, uh, <laughs> I think it's wonderful that you're um, you're interested in, in, in me sufficient to, to, to do this and to ask for yeah for so long because um, we just used to people stopping in the street and talking for a minute or two and that's it <laughs> yes that's yeah. it. but it's great to have and also the fact it will be recorded and there for for posterity probably i don't know that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. thank yeah. you very much indeed anyway both of you thank you a pleasure and what we so this podcast really is about it's for it's for artists it's for budding artists it's for people interested um I spend a lot of time in the studio myself. And as I was saying earlier, me looking at your insert and trying to see what colours are in your Pichard box, just those glimpses. So what we're trying to do is just give other artists these sort of little behind the scenes things. Because so many people will know, I mean, you've got 38,000 followers or something. They, They know your pictures, they get these little glimpses, but this is that little chance to you know, to see behind the scenes, the man exactly. behind. Uh, well, just on, on that point, um, you you um you learn a bit from every, a different person. If you're a guitarist, you learn a little bit from one guitarist. Absolutely. And someone else. You don't want one, you don't want to learn just from one. So you want a cross section. If you've, yes. got the, you've got the the patience to watch, watch the whole video, it's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, people can have it on in the background um, yeah. when they're in the studio or driving to go out out painting you know it could because you can have it as an audio version as well so it's just those those little things that sort of um art education in a way without it being formal and it's yeah. i know it's a painter it's those little tips and those yeah. little insights to what other painters do you know? it's helpful. Well, thank you very much again <laughs> it's really yeah fun. wonderful fun to yeah. talk to you uh, it's a yeah, pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.